So, um, okay, food is toja, I sell this. But that's not why I'm sharing this, because I think this is a really cool book. <laughs> okay, so this is, I mean... Um, I think my, um, for most people, your first programming experience is the Arduino, right? Uh, and then that might be a little bit intimidating for very young kids. So this is actually called the um, AE Robot. If you search for it on Google, I think it's probably the... You, you got very few hits. I mean, the full name is called the Affordable Education Robot. Okay, so I'm going to pass this around. You can take a little look at it. Just, uh, let me start with you. Yeah. So this, li this tiny little robot, it has a... Uh, let me on again. Yeah, bas okay. Basically, it's actually a robot that came out of one of the labs in Harvard. And he has this, uh, you know, GUI kind of like um, programming language that is uh, actually um, different from Scratch, but okay, it's called Mini Block. Okay, the first thing about Mini Block is that if you are not using win not using Windows, uh, you see, oh sorry, it's actually the other way. The other way yeah, the other way around. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is a line follower. Right? Yeah. So basically, uh, right now it vibrates yes, to move. It, it vibrates to move. Yes, two motors on it. So you have one motor here and one motor there, and based on the different rates of vibration, you can actually do turning. And this is an interesting project for me, and it excites me because it's, um, it has a lot of functionality. And it has uh, two motors, it has uh, line sensing capabilities, it has uh, light sensing capabilities. And I look at some of the examples, it says yes, you're able to detect bumps and all that. Uh, and it's very, very, um, very, very minimalistic. You, you actually have to assemble the chassis yourself. And it has this... Um, rechargeable battery okay so it's every everything in one you know and unlike when you get Arduino you need to get LEDs you need to get uh, actuators or other other kind of sensors but this is like very very contained and they actually have a very very nice curriculum on, on uh, top of it uh, but the only thing is that it doesn't work on a Mac <laughs> so, yeah it works uh, I'm not sure I'm not sure basically it's, it's a currently it's a very poorly documented project yeah so this, this ID, ID itself, it only works in, uh, in uh, Windows. You can try running using Wine on Linux, but the latest version doesn't run, and I had a hard time pulling my hair, okay? <laughs> yeah, and the code, and if you say, you know, um, the code is quite, I mean, I literally started playing with it today. Uh, it basically, basically uh, let's see, this, this part, let me delete this, okay. So originally, the code, this is actually the example code from the line following, and I wanted to add color. So I just added this block, okay? So this is like the, uh, let me see. The, uh, the transparent side down. You can just click on this, okay? You can choose whatever color you, you actually want, all right? And uh, you can, so I chose the RGB values. So you can click one more time, and then you can, add a constant value over here see this block returns a constant number or you can add in random values which is what I did okay so I can add constant I mean uh, random values from 0 to 100 I'm not sure why it's 0 to 100 and not 0 to 255 but that's another uh, uh, problem to look at later and then you just compile this okay and if you say you are f feeling this is too simple for you of course no. there's always a way to look at the generator code yeah <laughs> Okay, some, some, maybe some of you think this is simpler. <laughs> yeah. I understand the thing on the right. <laughs> it's a lot of brackets. brackets. Is that a list? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I literally just started playing around with it today. Uh, the, you can do line following, but I think you need to do some calibration. So, I'm still trying to play with it. So, when I've, you know, I have more experience with it, I'll be happy to share more. Interesting question is mm. since you, you say it's affordable, what, what are you looking at for price point? Oh, yeah, yeah. I that's, that's the most important part, I would guess. But, and uh, I think we, if we we're going to sell it, we'll probably be pricing around like 39 Singapore dollars. Wow, okay, that's cheap. Yeah. Because I know the pre uh, primary schools and secondary schools, they do the Lego Mind Storms, right? Yeah. That's at least about $5. They yeah. Do, they do like flower also. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. very expensive. Yeah. 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 Of course, if you join the National Junior Robotics Competition, right, you get a uh, no, no, but that's discount. That's yeah, that's, that's a different so, issue. Right? So they have got, they have a very comprehensive that's list of examples. The point here is that uh, the no. point here is I, I'm pretty sure that if you buy the components for this, it's also going to be around twenty thirty dollars. It, there's nothing oh, in there. It's so cheap. Okay, the, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, I just realized that they're using the cell phone motors. Mm. Those are ridiculously cheap because yep. every cell phone has it. So the you look at the examples. 
Super they have an idea of the functionality. You know, the LED, they have an LED on it. You can do movements left, right, forward, bump detection, random colors, light sensors, uh, wall following. I'm not. I think they have a sensor on it. Yeah. So this is uh, something very interesting. If, if no, no, no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, cool. We shall keep all the electronics on so that you know, yeah. don't dismantle any electronics, okay? Yeah.